So when you as a data scientist think about the term AI, what do you think of? What, is it, what does it actually mean? And let's try to go beyond the hype because AI has become the, the, the latest um, jargon, you know, it's even better now. It's exploding faster than digital transformation, which sure. is, has exploded into meaninglessness. So yeah. what do you, yeah. <laughs> uh, if there's nothing else that our industry is good for, it's for creating terms that people can use that have ambiguous meaning and can be taken to mean almost anything in any situation. And this is certainly one of them. Um, so it's, it's one of those things that you understand, but then when you try to define it, uh, scholars will disagree on the exact definition, but artificial intelligence collectively is a bunch of technologies that we run into. So you'll hear AI, you'll hear machine learning, you'll hear deep learning, sometimes deep belief. Uh, neuromorphic computing is something that you might run into or neural networks, um, natural language processing, inference algorithms, recommendation engines, all of these fall into that category. And some of the things that you might touch upon are uh, autonomous systems, bots, uh, uh, sometimes we will hear talk of, well, Siri is probably the most obvious example that anybody runs into or, or um, any of the other, uh, I won't try to name them all because I'll forget one, uh, but things of that nature where you have these assistants that try to sort of mimic the behavior of a person when you're on a website and it says, click here to talk to Shelly or click here to talk to Doug, you know, you're not really talking to a person, you're talking to a bot. And so those are examples of this. Um, generally speaking, that's the broad brush. And then if you think about it as a computer scientist, you would say that these are systems processes that are designed to do any one of several things. One of them is to mimic human behavior. Another one is to mimic human thought process. Another is to behave intelligently, and I'll put that in quotes. Uh, another is to behave rationally, and that's the subject of a huge debate. Another one is to behave ethically. That's an even bigger debate. So uh, those are some of the categories that these systems and processes fall into. And then there's, there's um, ways to categorize the actual algorithm. So there, there are deterministic approaches, there are non-deterministic approaches, there are rules-based approaches. Um, so there's different ways you can look at this. You can look at it from the bottom up, the way it just ended, or you can look at it in terms of what you see and touch and experience. So from a business perspective, when we hear terms like machine learning, AI, uh, cognitive computing, is there is there some type of framework in which we can think of these things? How do how do they relate to one another? Are they synonymous? They're not synonymous. So cognitive computing is very different than machine learning, and I would call both of them a type of AI, just to try and describe those three. So I would say artificial intelligence is all of that that stuff I just described. It's a, a collection of things designed to either mimic behavior, mimic thinking, uh, mim behave intelligently, behave rationally, behave ethically. Those are sort of the systems and processes that are in the collection of soup that we call artificial intelligence. Cognitive computing is a, primarily an IBM term. It's a, it's a phenomenal approach to curate a massive amount of un, information that can be ingested into what's called a cognitive stack. And then to basically be able to create connections among all of the ingested material so that a particular problem can be sort of discovered by the user or a particular question can be explored that hasn't been anticipated. Machine learning is almost the opposite of that, where you have a goal function. You have something very specific that you're trying to find in the data. And the machine learning will look at lots of disparate data and try to create proximity to this goal function. Basically, try to find what you told it to look for. Typically, you do that by either training the system or by watching it behave and sort of turning knobs and buttons. So there's unsupervised and supervised learning. And that's very, very different than cognitive computing. So again, in our quest to demystify the basics, you explained that the systems quote unquote learn. What, and we hear the term modeling, right? We hear the term we have to train when you talk to, uh, to, to data scientists and they're talking about machine learning, they say we have to train the model, create the model mm -hmm. and train it. What does that mean? So a model is basically a method of looking at a set of data in the past or a set of data that's already been collected 
and describing it in a mathematical way. And we have techniques based on regression where we continue to refine that model until it behaves within a certain performance. It basically predicts the outcome that we intended to predict in retrospect. And then assuming that we can extrapolate from the frame we're in to the future, which is a big assumption, we can use that model to try to predict what happens going forward mathematically. The most obvious example of this that we have right now is the elections, right? So we look at the polling data, we look at the phase of the moon, we look at the shoe sizes, whatever we decide to look at, and we say, this is what's going to happen. And then something happens that maybe the model didn't predict. Now we get into AI. And the way some systems work, not all, is they say, show me something that looks like what you were looking for. And then I'll go find lots of other things that look just like it. So train me. Give me a web page and tell me on that web page which things you find to be interesting. Now I'll go find a whole bunch of other web pages that look like that. Give me a set of signals that you consider to be danger. And then when I see those signals, I'll tell you that something dangerous is happening. That's what we call training. Okay, images, mountains or sure. seashores. What does that mean? How does, when you say find something interesting on the page, can you drill into that? Sure. So imagine that I gave, gave uh, a whole bunch of people, and the gold standard here is they have to be similarly incented and similarly instructed. So I, I can't get like, you know, five computer scientists and four interns. And it, you, you try to get people that, that more or less have either they're completely randomly dispersed or they're all kind of trying to do the same thing. There's two different ways to do it, right? And you show them lots and lots of pictures and you show them pictures of mountains mixed in with pictures of camels and pictures of, you know, maybe things that are almost mountains like ice cream cones and you let them tell you which ones are mountains. And then the machine is watching and learning from people's behavior when they pick out mountains to pick out mountains like people do. That's called a heuristic approach. When we look at people and we model their behavior by watching it and then doing the same thing they did. And that's a type of learning. That heuristic modeling is one of the ways that machine learning can work, not the only way. There's, there's a lot of easy ways to trick this. So people's faces are a great example. When you look at people's faces, and, and we probably all know that there are techniques for modeling with certain points on a face, you know, the corners of the eyes. I don't want to get into any IP here, but there's certain places where you, you build angles between these certain places, and then those angles don't typically change much. And then you see mug shots with people with their eyes wide open or with crazy expressions in their mouth, and those are people trying to confound those algorithms by distorting their face. It's why you're not supposed to smile in your passport picture. But machine learning has gotten much better than that now. We have things like the eigenface and other techniques for modeling the, the rotation and distortion of the face and determining that it's still the same thing. So these things get better and better and better over time. And sometimes as, as people try to confound the training, we learn from that behavior as well. So this thing all feeds into itself and these things get better and better and better. And eventually they approach the goal, if you will, of yes, it only finds mountains, it never misses a mountain, and it never gets confused by an ice cream cone. How is this different from traditional programming, right? Because with traditional programming, we can put up pictures, you can do a Google search, uh, or a few years ago, maybe before there was uh, big machine learning, and pick out pictures of mountains or whatever. So how is this different? The original way that this was done through was through gamification or, or just image tagging. So they either had people playing a game or they had people trying to help and saying, this is a mountain, this is not a mountain, this is Mount Fuji, this is Mount Kilimanjaro, and this is, so they got a bunch of words, they got a bunch of people that used words to describe pictures Amazon, using their human a, brain. A, Amazon Turk, for example. There you go, Mechanical Turk, right? Yeah. And, and then using those techniques, they just basically curated a bunch of words and said, all right, the word mountain is, is very often associated with, there's a high correlation statistically between the use of the word mountain and this image. Therefore, when people are looking for a mountain, give them this image. When they're looking for Mount Fuji, give them this image and not this image. And that, that was basically a trick of using human brains and using words. That's not the only way it works today. There's many more sophisticated ways today. Mm -hmm.